Welcome back to video two. We're going to be exploring the Healing You Method together. And this method is one that I've developed. It's a very effective healing method that's a blend of relational neuroscience, nonviolent communication or resonant language, along with somatic empathy, which literally rewires our nervous system and restores a sense of self-love and with compassion and for emo emotional regulation and well-being deep within us. So let me share with you my screen. So how do we get from where we're stuck to what is possible for us? This is a question that I really spent some time with in my life. And I was really stuck. I was stuck in fear. I was stuck in fear of not being enough, of not knowing what to do and not knowing how to say it, even if I did know what to do. And it was a spiral in my life. It was a deeply embedded pattern. And I didn't know where to turn or everywhere that I did turn, there didn't seem to be resources that actually met me where I was or the resources weren't meeting me where I was as a parent for my children, because that's what really was my motivation for reaching outside of the box to find ways of being in relationship that restored us, that calmed and soothed us. I remember going to um, so many different professionals as a professional myself to consult with them, to find out what, did they know something I didn't know? And being met with, with other professionals saying, wow, you're more of an expert on this than I am. You've already got this down. And I was like, but I want more support. And there wasn't a solution for that. Well, thanks to the advancement of technology, such as what I'm reaching out to you on right now, I'm passionate to make some resources that can reach people wherever they're at because we need to have those kinds of resources. We need community that really cares about us and goes the extra mile to meet us where we are and that get us with compassionate understanding and lots of care and warmth. Because I say, no, that's not the way it is. Um, that's not all that's possible. I know from my own life experience that it is possible to Find your way back into being totally free to socially engage with ease and relaxation and a sense of inner freedom without fear of what others are going to think or say or do. That you can stay engaged and open and curious and have authentic limits in your relationships. I'd like to explore a little bit of what this healing you method is. Well, the first thing in my experience is it's important to begin to expand your capacity to be more self-aware. It all begins within our sense of self. And so mindfulness is an excellent strategy to use. And in that practice of mindfulness, slowing down to notice rather than judge is a big key distinction there. When I'm noticing something, I'm open-minded and I'm curious around it. Rather than judging um, or criticizing, because then we're labeling. We think we know something. We're making it right or wrong. And I want to stay out in the field beyond right and wrong. So practicing noticing, practicing noticing patterns, practicing noticing how I speak, noticing how I think. And noticing how I feel. I remember the first time that I noticed that I noticed and I got very excited about that and because I could notice that it was I was changing by practicing it consistently really makes a key difference. So being able to notice in the moment allows us to actually begin to take in expand our senses all of our senses to take more energy and information flow of our environment in, rather than automatically 
not noticing. Because when we go into autopilot, we stop actually receiving new information because we already think we know what's there. That's fascinating to see the research on that. So when you start to notice, it's important to slow time down for yourself, to be willing to take the time that you need to engage with your own inner felt experience. I find it most beneficial to close my eyes and to begin to breathe deep into my belly and then noticing what I'm noticing. Or you can practice slowing down time when you notice what you're telling yourself and you can notice what happens to my body when I'm telling myself that. So being able to track sensations and that's, that's called bottom-up processing. Most of us, from the time we were little, going through school and university, and most of our work settings, it's all about the mind and it's about top-down processing, making decisions on that, making judgments. And those are important to be able to do. And for the healing new journey, to heal old patterns of trauma, um, to really strengthen your social engagement system, you really need to rely upon your, um, your inner organs, your sensing organs. And there's like 80 to 90% of all information goes up from our sensory organs through our brainstem up to tell, tells our uh, social engagement system what to do. So it's really important to become a friend with your body, beginning with sensations. And when you begin to notice the moments, it's also important then to be able to name it. What is the emotional flavor of your inner experience? There's a trainer I worked with at the beginning of this journey of my mind was Susan Skye, who's a certified nonviolent communication trainer. And she used to talk about all the different flavors of Baskin Robbins ice cream and how you need to be able to find just that right flavor that you most enjoy. And so when you think about the emotional experience and how it tastes, how it feels, then you can actually develop more of a language around that that allows you to find just that exquisite flavor that you're searching for and notice your body will shift when you find it. And when we name it, um, the neuroscience researcher Daniel Siegel, he calls that name it to tame it. Because when we can begin to express and honestly express what's going on for us, it begins to restore us back into a sense of regulation. And so the feelings awareness, there's also research here that shows you when you can notice in your body where those feelings or emotions are lodged, it also allows there to be a bit of a release. So I love this imagery here that shows where they have scanned the body to be able to see where the different emotions actually show up. So going all the way from neutral to surprise, sadness, happiness, disgust, fear, anger, anxiety, love, depression, contempt, pride, shame, and envy. You can see how there's such a fluctuation of the energies in our body. And as we develop an awareness, when we feel those sensations, it will begin to let us know what's, where is that going? Because we link sensations to the feeling states or to the emotional flavors. And then also pausing there, it's important to notice what you're telling yourself. Because what we tell ourselves is actually going to let us know what we are believing, what our belief systems are. Many people that I've worked with weren't aware that other people had a voice in their head, which I found very interesting. Um, everyone has that inner voice. Not everyone is aware that everyone has that inner voice. And depending upon our life experience, that part of us is actually called the default mode network. Depending on what our life experience has been, it might not be a very kind voice inside of us. And yet through this Healing You Method, what I've discovered is you begin to 
um, transform that voice into one of compassion for yourself. And it's really important to notice, though, because as a powerful tool to notice what we're telling ourselves, we can also uncover unconscious beliefs about ourselves or about situations or other people. The default mode network is also known as our storyteller. And it's predominantly left hemisphere, so it's not as connected to our body. In fact, when we're disconnected from our body, our default mode network will make up stories. It will confabulate. So it's not known as being our truth teller. Not unless we're able to really reconnect and come back into balance with our body's wisdom. So part of the process, when we're able to start to notice sensation, notice our emotional feeling, and notice what we're telling ourselves, there's a couple of different processes that I will utilize to support people coming back to wholeness. And one is time travel empathy, and the other is unconscious contract processes. And they're both very unique. And it's literally being able to accompany someone back through time into a memory and to slow time down to make it all safe for their inner experience. And it's usually a time that someone was left alone and they were alarmed. And when we have alarmed aloneness, it's trauma. And there's a process that we go through with this where we check in with the body when, when you're in the memory in order to make it safe and make sure there's consent there's never any have to's in these processes. It's really led by your body's wisdom. And when I support my client's current version of themselves to time travel with me back to their younger self, there can be an inner parts dialogue where there can be a conversation, there can be a deepened understanding. And the part that didn't feel safe or felt alone or felt um, abandoned whatever it is, then there's a restoration that happens. And then there's an invitation for them to be able to time travel back in order to come home and have integration. The unconscious contract process is one where you can begin to hear what it is you've been telling yourself or what you believe. And in many times through these processes, you discover something you didn't really realize. And so there's a formal contract that we go through in order to be able to release that. And noticing, following the body's wisdom. Again, there's no have to. It's about meeting your nervous system right where it's at with warmth and resonance and accompaniment. That is the power of this healing energy of healing you. And through these processes, we're really linking all of these inner sensations and emotions and even thought clouds to what our felt experience is to our sacred values. It's also known as, as what are our common human needs. And when we take the time to really deepen into what is the deepest need that's alive, there's also a visceral shift that you'll feel within your sense of self. And there's some key distinctions that we need to be able to make. We need to be able to differentiate needs from strategies. And when we're first learning this, they can get very blurred. <laughs> I can remember my experience with that. Um, and so it's important to become, again, fluent in the needs language or in your sacred values language to really know yourself in this way and to be able to live your life in alignment with those values. And it's really possible to live from the awareness that everything we do is an attempt to contribute to these values or to meet those deep needs we have or to contribute to the needs of another person we care for or their sacred values. Every action, Every movement, every thought is an attempt to meet those needs. And then from this place, when we're grounded in those sacred values and we've linked our experience in, 
it's possible then to witness life from a place of presence where you have the experience of being one with life. And rather than reacting, you respond. You have more choice. I've noticed that places where I used to withdraw or tighten up, that I'm able to stay open hearted and curious and engaged. And I can stay in the conversations, whereas before I would go mute and I wouldn't, I might think things, but I wasn't speaking them. And so that's a really big, big difference. Um, and from this place of practicing presence with gratitude, you're able to witness and recognize other people and what they may be feeling and what they might be needing. And you can engage with more ease and confidence. And I find the practice of gratitude to be so, so important. I remember for years now, I've had little journals. And I would practice making observations throughout my day and, and talking in my journal around how I felt about what had happened and linking it into my needs and my values. And when I was complete with that, I'd, I'd then check in if I had any, any um, requests that I'd like to make of myself, because that's also a very key element, is to make authentic requests of myself or of others. And when I'm able to do that, then I would feel this gratitude within. So I'd draw a little picture of a little flower or a rainbow, a bird, a tree. But take the time and try and brings in your right hemisphere more fully, as well as going into sensations and emotions. And when we come from that, we can really step into a place where we really are appreciating life and the experiences that we're, we're beginning to notice more of in order to transform them and, and restore our whole sense of self rather than judging ourselves or making ourselves wrong. And so that's, um, that's pretty much what it's like. The broad strokes of the Healing You Method, it's very somatic-based. Throughout the process, there's learning about your nervous system, about the relational neuroscience. And it's, um, hmm, it's life transforming. So in this next video, I invite you to join me there where I will be going through four key principles used by heart-centered people to nurture amazing relationships and meaningful corporate regions. I hope to see you there.